All right, coming up on this episode of Watch Culture, we're finally doing it, Chris. We're talking about your favorite movie. Yes, we are. In case you guys don't know what it is, it's Army of Darkness. Yeah, we're talking about it. It's happening. It's happening. <laughs> so check it out. <laughs> All right, we're back for another episode of Watch Culture, the show where we give you recommendations on movies you should watch. And I'm going to let Chris take it away. And boy, have we got a recommendation <laughs> for you. My favorite movie of all time, mm -hmm. the best B movie that has ever been made in the history of cinema, yes. Army of Darkness 1993, starring the immortal Bruce Campbell, the all amazing Bruce Campbell. Also known as Evil Dead 3, yes. if Sam Raimi had his way. <laughs> yeah. Or the medieval dead. Yeah, yeah, sure. There, <laughs> where to start? This 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 whole it's just it's an experience and like you have you absolutely have to see this movie. Mm -hmm. It is so bad it's good. I've had I've never had anybody tell me that they've hated. I've had people tell me it's like, yeah, I'm a little like indifferent to it or like it lost steam like about three quarters of the way through and I'm like, fine, fair, whatever. Mm -hmm. But He's a little bit rough around the edges too. Like, as like a feminist, you could maybe have a hard time like appreciating him as a character. Oh yeah. Initially, well, Bruce Campbell said too. Like, Ash is like a he's basically a horrible person. Like yeah. he, he's terrible. He's full of himself. Yes. Um. Yeah, and and he just he he's very selfish. Only does the, the only time that he does the right thing is when he's kind of forced into doing it, or his mm -hmm. he just and or he feels guilty enough to do something about it. Um, the love interest in this film, um, sort or of Sheila. yeah, Sheila, yeah, she just kind of tugs on his heartstrings a little bit. But like how he treats her at the beginning, it's it's yeah, it's <laughs> not ex <laughs> it's not exactly something you'd see in film today. Which is, I mean, it but. Yeah, it's but a product of its time. There's also people out there like that still, which is very sad. It is, yeah. He said to he said to uh, he recently didn't ask me anything, and um, he's a, uh, somebody asked him if um, uh, give me some sugar, which is a line from the movie he uses. But right before he kisses uh, uh, Sheila after he's treated her poorly, give me some sugar, baby. He's like, has that ever worked in real life? He's like, only once. There was one guy who told him one time he actually got laid using that line. And um, wow. he's like, every, <laughs> every other time, it's not gone over well. <laughs> because, of, of course not, right? Well, yeah, why would it? <clears throat> yeah, so that aside, that's not, I mean, that's not really what we're talking about here. I just wanted to mention the fact that yeah. he's an awful person because it could be off-putting initially. But just, like, work through that. Yeah, and you can't help but root for him. You really can't because he's yeah. like surefire mm -hmm. cocky like and but he's surefire and cocky in a way that you're yeah. just like i want this guy to like like kick ass and kill demons i mean like he says things like come get some yeah. and i mean i grew up in the era of duke nukem so for me that was always like a cool line and bruce campbell is the authentic like he's the originator of that line, yeah so. like duke nukem stole all its best quotes from this movie yeah come get some um um hail to the king hail to the king baby like those two in particular, but um, this movie, uh, I, I we've talked about movies in the past, and and Tim and Mike have talked about like super quotable movies. This one is infinitely, but this is infinitely quotable. Yeah, <laughs> like your leaders, but two things right now: Jack and shit. Jack left town. Um, good, bad. I'm the guy with the gun. Give me some sugar. Hell to the king. Come get some. It's a trick. Get an axe. Um, yeah. Are all men from the future loudmouth braggarts like you? Nope. <laughs> nope. Just me, baby. Just me. He literally repeat. He literally goes, "Just me, baby. Just me." And the way, the like, the tone and inflection, it's just like yeah. it is so campy. You just can't help but like belt out a little. Also, laughter. is groovy his too? Yes. Groovy. Yes. It's like and it's like that. <laughs> that's how he says it, like with a low tone, almost like a whisper. I can't really do it Groovy. justice, but it's like that's and it's synonymous mm -hmm. with Bruce Campbell. Bruce Campbell is Ash Williams. Ash Williams is Bruce Campbell. Yeah. You can't picture anybody else in the role. No. Uh, they recently did a TV show and they updated it, and um, he just plays an older version of the character, and he's still like a terrible person. Mm -hmm. But um, it was really, it was really well done. He's since retired the character. He's getting a little bit too old. It's a very physical role. Like they throw, especially in the first two Evil Dead, they throw like a lot of blood at him, and um, uh, they put him through the ringer. He's got a scar on his chin, actually. Um, from one of his, the movie. From the movie, yeah, because yeah. it, it, you know, because um, it was so 
you know, he had so many cuts and bruises. Didn't he write a book too about chins? Or yeah, how do, yeah. You, how do you title it? Uh, if chins could kill, confessions of a B movie actor. Yeah, there you go. I, I own that book. <laughs> I knew, I knew, I knew you knew. <laughs> of course I did, <laughs> because I love everything about this film. It is the best. So, yeah. yeah. So I'm just gonna pepper a couple of anecdotes in here that I found interesting about the Evil Dead trilogy. So did you know? I'm sure you knew, but did you know <laughs> that you can actually cut the three Evil Dead movies together seamlessly? if you skip out some of the introductory information from the two sequels. Yes. Yeah. That's how tightly knit they are, yeah. They are. Yeah, and two's almost like a pseudo remake of one, but mm -hmm. it does kind of pick up uh, off after the other one. It's just, there is a huge change in tone from two to three. <laughs> there is, and one, isn't there a bit of a change in tone from one to two as well? Less so. Less so, but. Yeah, way less so. Like, one and two are meant to be straight up horror, and three, Army of Darkness, is more of a horror comedy. Mm -hmm. Like, it's very slapsticky. Like, there is a, a scene in where he's getting the Necronomicon, which is the book, the, the essentially book the, the dead. Which is essentially the MacGuffin of the picture. And he's trying to get it, and he recites the, the words incorrectly. And he's, yeah, the Three Stooges <laughs> bit where, like, the skeleton bones come up out of the graveyard and they trip him down and he's on the ground and there's, like, they're trying to get him, they're grabbing his tongue and pull it out. And he's like, eh, and they grab his tongue and he's like, they try and poke him in the eyes. He's like, ha ha. <laughs> and yeah. six skeleton uh, arms punch him at the same time. Like, he's like, ah. And they do, like, the Tweety Bird sound. It's, like, very slapstick. Yeah. I mean, there's a lot of, like, funny moments, too, like... <laughs> Uh, when he's dealing with his, like the little mini ashes, and <laughs> <laughs> and like he's like trying to murder them, well, like because that's what he's doing effectively. Like it's not, like, it's not like he's like trying to make friends. He's like he's just trying to stomp them out. Yeah, and because they're like little deadite versions of him, and then one like dives into his stomach, and so like. In something that makes zero sense whatsoever, <laughs> he picks up a boiling hot kettle and just and just drinks it in order to boil. Which, if you know anything about boiling water... <laughs> <laughs> you can't drink how, boiling water. That, that's not how that would work at no. all. But he thought... It's, yeah, and anyway, he ends up splitting into two good ash and evil ash. And it's just... It, he plays both roles, too, by the way. And, and well. And well. And it's just... It's, like, very swashbuckly. The skeletons in there are animated, like... Uh, um, uh, uh, claymation at times, which makes it look like the suit it, it evokes the old uh, Harryhausen, like uh, like um, Clash of the Titans, Clash of the Titans, Hercules stuff like that, yeah. back from back in the day. Yep. Um, yeah. Yeah. He did it under a budget of un, like under four mil, and so he had to like reuse a lot of the skeletons and things too. Yeah. So they had they only had about a dozen or so, and they would blow them up and put them back meticulously, put them back together. Yeah. Uh, for the ones that were playing an instrument in the big uh, army assault at the end. They dug a trench and had the guys like do the puppeteering underneath, and everybody like run on the ground beside them. Um, some of the in order to fit into the suits, they hired like ballet dancers because they're thinner, and like put them in the um, in the dead looking suits so that they yeah. could have like zombies, like just little things. It's definitely a labor of love, and um, it's just great. It's just great. Also, something really interesting that I found out, and I don't, and I don't, I don't know if you knew this, but they used something called introvision to like do the forefront and have like the characters in the front and in the back of the screen. Oh, I see. So like, it's very different than like green screening, I guess. Yeah. In that it like it allows you to create. It feels like the characters are actually in the environment. I mean, like a film buff, a, f a film enthusiast rather <laughs> would re recognize the difference between. The two. Yeah, yeah. But, like, he, yeah, there's, like, a lot of really neat things they, they did technically. To in, make it work. To yeah. make this movie work. And, I mean, yeah, because they didn't have a lot of that technology then. Or even if they did, like, well, I mean, 92, I guess, like, Terminator 2 was out in 92, and that had a lot, of, a lot of CGI, but it's not like they had that kind of budget. Or, like, the chainsaw had smoke, like, <laughs> billowing into it from, like, tobacco smoke coming up through his. Yeah. So, like, it felt like the chainsaw was always, like... Firing. Yeah, yeah. They yeah. just did, like neat little practical effects. Yeah, yeah. And it's just all the way around. Super quotable, very entertaining, super funny. Bruce Campbell is great in it. Um, shop at Smart. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> shop smart, shop at Smart. Yeah. Yeah. Um, it's got like, um, like can like can like uh, Ted Raimi's twin brother. Yeah. Uh, or Sam Raimi's, I should say, twin brother. Ted. Ted is like plays multiple roles roles in it. Yeah, uh, it's got a uh, at the beginning an early cameo from Bridget Fonda. It's like, Linda, the girlfriend. The girlfriend, 
Yeah, um, it's got a, a well-known stunt woman who was in a science fiction show called Babylon 5, Patricia Talman. She plays a deadite at the end. Mm -hmm. Like, just all these little things that just make it, like, it's just the, the, the perfect confluence of a B-movie. 100%. So that said, this has been our review of Army of Darkness. Subscribe to the channel, hit the bell for notifications, leave a like, leave some comments, get Chris fired up with your feedback about Army of Darkness. Yeah. And this has been Watch Culture. Thanks for watching. Uh, first you want to kill me, now you want to kiss me. Blow. <laughs> what does it say? You got real ugly? You, you, you found me beautiful once. You got real ugly, man. <laughs> yeah, yeah. That's good, too. Um... I could, yeah, obviously hail to the king. <laughs>